David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today, I have for you a fairly new pen from the Keras Pen Company, which is an updated version of one of their initial fountain pen offerings. At least I believe it was the first one they ever produced. And that pen is the ink. And today, I'll be showing you the Ink V2. Uh, what I'll be doing is going over the parts and features of the Ink V2, showing you the difference between this pen and the previous version, uh, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about this model. I'll give some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Uh, thanks go out to the good folks at Keras Pen Company for providing this pen for review. Uh, the pen arrives in this cardboard box. Um, on the back, it says Mesa. They are based out of Mesa, Arizona, which is just outside of Phoenix. Uh, inside, uh, for me, they included a, a little one-up Mario uh, Karras uh, Pen Company sticker, which is kind of cool. And then inside in this soft foam is the pen. This is the Ink V2. Back in 2013, Keras launched the first iteration of the ink via a Kickstarter campaign. Um, I think they had made some ball points or roller balls previously, but I think this was their first foray into the world of fountain pens. Then in 2015, they produced their second version of this pen, which is the one that you're most likely familiar with. And that they have just released a third version of this pen, which they are calling version two. I know that sounds a bit odd, but they really didn't uh, brand the 2015 redesign as a different version. So that's how this one here became uh, to be called the V2. Uh, later on, when I discuss differences in the versions of this pen, I'll be comparing the version 2 to the 2015 model. Um, I'll first go over the parts and features of the V2, and then I'll show the differences between the two. The pen is made from an anodized aluminum. Um, it is available in 10 different colors, as well as one in solid copper and another in solid brass. Um, I'll show you here in a bit, but I do own one of the solid copper versions of the 2015 model. Uh, it is the heaviest pen in my collection. Uh, the copper and brass ones have a significant heft to them. Uh, the aluminum models in, are in no way lightweight, but they are significantly lighter compared to the uh, solid copper and brass ones. Um, let's take a look at the cap. Uh, in my opinion, this is the most distinctive and unique portion of this pen. The thick tumbled steel clip wraps around, extending a bit from the top of the cap. Uh, it is held there by these two bolts. Between the clip and the bolts, it gives this pen a bit of an industrial look and feel to it. Uh, the clip is rather stiff, but it is still functional. With the extreme weight of the brass and copper versions, I really wouldn't recommend keeping those in a shirt or a breast pocket, but the lighter aluminum models work well in just about any pocket. Uh, the cap is straight, and then there is a fairly smooth transition to the barrel, which is straight for a bit before tapering down toward the end, and the end of the barrel is angled and then flat. The cap twists off with a rotation and a half, and underneath we have a stainless steel number six Bach nib laser engraved with what I feel is a rather cool design. Sometimes laser engraved nibs can look a little bit cheap in my opinion, but I really like this design. It's unique, and I think it looks rather classy. Uh, this nib is available in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, double broad, and a 1.1 stub, and then for an additional cost, you can upgrade to a titanium nib in either extra fine or broad. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section on this particular model I have here is brass, which will tarnish over time. Uh, if you get this option uh, or the copper, you need to choose whether or not you keep it polished or you let nature take over. I typically let things like this tarnish over age. There are five different section options. There is a tumbled aluminum, an anodized black, a raw aluminum, and then copper and brass. The copper and brass options are a couple of dollars more. The section then transitions into the threads, which I don't find to be sharp or uncomfortable if your grip should happen to rest on them. And then there's a rather large step up to the remainder of the barrel. The Ink V2 is plenty long enough to use unposted, which is a good thing because the cap is not designed to post. Um, even though this pen is metal, I find it to be well balanced and not so heavy that it's burdensome to use for longer writing sessions. This is a cartridge converter pen and it will accept standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. With all of the metal in this pen, eye dropping would not be recommended. 
Okay, I think it's a good time to talk about the differences between this new model and the one that came before it. Um, here is my all copper brass, or a copper uh, ink that I mentioned previously. Um, externally, the changes are very minor. Uh, the pens are the same dimensions and weight uh, for the aluminum versions. The only really difference is on the end of the barrel. The old version came to a very slight point. And on the V2, the end is completely flat. This is due to an upgrade to some of the equipment Kara uses to construct the pens. Uh, the main differences in these pens are around the nib and the section. You can see here, the nib on the previous version had the standard Bach design as opposed to the new laser engraving, uh, and it is set much deeper into the section. In regard to the sections, the new sections have a deeper swale and are slightly shorter. For the V2, this transitions into a flat area right before the threads. Um, there is a purpose for this area. A silicone O-ring has been added to the cap of the V2, and that's where the O-ring will engage with the section. When you are capping the pen, uh, on the very last little twist, you can feel the O-ring engage with that flat portion. It only lasts for about an eighth of a turn, but it gives the cap a bit of a satisfying feeling when you're closing it, and adds an additional level of security, helping the cap from inadvertently disengaging. Uh, another change is in the threads themselves. On the older model, you can see the threads came to a point, and at times they could be rather sharp. On the V2, you can see how the threads have been flattened out. Uh, in addition, they've been shortened. It took about two rotations to uncap the old version, and as I mentioned previously, about a rotation and a half for the V2. Um, I believe that's all the changes. Oh, no, there was one more thing. Uh, you could also interchange the sections between the two versions. Um, you can't interchange the caps, however, so you can't fully mix and match between the versions, but being able to switch the sections is a nice feature, especially if you have a, a nib or a section you really enjoy on one of the older versions. Uh, the standard Ink V2 retails for $95. On the high end, if you choose the uh, like the copper version with the copper section and titanium nib, then you're looking at up to $235. But for the basic version of this pen, I feel $95 is a very reasonable price for what you receive with the Ink V2. Uh, it's a very solid, well-made pen. And as you'll see in the writing sample, performs well as well. Um, and I feel that each of the improvements they made to this version were for the better. Um, for some variety, if you don't already have a pen from Keras in your collection, then I would highly recommend checking this model out. I have purchased several Keras pens in the past, and I have enjoyed each of them. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Keras Pen Company Ink V2. Uh, first of all, in comparison to some other Keras models, uh, this is the 2015 ink model. This one is in the all copper. You can see how it's tarnished nicely. Uh, and then even the section, since it's exposed to a little bit more moisture, uh, that it tarnishes a little bit quicker. Uh, and so that has some nice coloring to it as well. Then here are a couple of other Keras Pen Company pens. This is the Vertex. Uh, and then this one here is the Reactor Starliner. And then one more to show you. Uh, this is another ink model, and this one is the Mugiyun Monster. Uh, this is the one I picked up be basically because of the nib on here. The, the nib on here is laser engraved with a picture of the Mugiyun Monster, which is kind of uh, Arizona's version of Bigfoot. So if there was a, a, a nib with or a pen with Bigfoot on the nib, then that was definitely something that I had to purchase. In regard to some non keras pens, here it is with a Twisby VAC 700, a Diplomat Arrow, and here it is with a Lamy All-Star. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here it is with the Reactor Starliner, and the Lamy All-Star, and the Twisby VAC 700.
So here we have the Keras Pen Company. And this is the Ink V2. And this is a medium stainless steel nib. And the ink that I'm using today is Diamine Skull and Roses. This was a very cool ink. Uh, I don't know if it's available wide now, but when it was released, it was something that was only available uh, through uh, German retailers. It was only available in Germany. But Diamine came out with a whole series of rock and roll themed inks. Uh, and Communication Breakdown was my favorite of the batch. But this Skull and Roses, which is takes its name in reference to a Grateful Dead album, uh, is really nice. It's a nice saturated blue with some really nice sheening to it. Um, here it is in comparison to the KWZ Sheen Machine, as well as the uh, Krishna Pakaza, which is the ink that comes in that very cool uh, bottle. This is what the bottle looks like. The Diamine 80 milliliter bottles are fantastic. A really nice mouth. You can fit just about any pen in here. Now in regard to the rest of the writing sample. Now, I will say that I am very impressed with this nib. I'm not quite sure uh, how much they tune them in-house, but this particular nib is extremely smooth uh, and very well tuned. So I was very impressed with this. Um, it does have a little bit of bounce to it. It doesn't feel super stiff. Uh, you don't get that much flexibility with a standard stainless steel nib, um, but the ink flow on this nib is decent. In regard to reverse writing, it's a little bit sharp, but it does get the job done. And in regard to some fast writing, there's no issue whatsoever. Yes, I, I really like this nib. It's very, very nice. So there you have the Keras Pen Company Ink V2. Um, as I mentioned previously, I think that all of the additions and uh, improvements they made to this pen were for the better. I think that it uh, made it that much better of a pen. And the performance of this nib is outstanding for a stainless steel nib. And so it's something that I would highly recommend you check out. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.